This is Wild Chronicles. I'm Boyd Matson. The Erta Ali volcano is the undisputed master of this Ethiopian wasteland. The surrounding moonscape is 12 times the size of Manhattan. And as far as the eye can see, there is nothing here, not a single living creature. As brutal and unwelcoming as this place is, millions of years ago, this region was home to our earliest ancestors. Now, humans are back. It's quite exciting. I want to see it now. A team of volcanologists and National Geographic photographer Karsten Peter are here to attempt something no one has been able to do for a quarter of a century. Get a sample of molten rock from this lava lake. Called the hell hole of creation, the offer triangle lies at the junction of three continental plates slowly pushing apart this piece of the planet. This is one of the lowest points on Earth. The base of this volcano is 300 feet below sea level. One of the world's oldest living lava lakes. It's been bubbling for at least the last 90 years. Geologists who brave the trip get to study the processes that formed the world millions of years ago. It's as close as volcano explorer Franck Tessier can get to the stuff of creation. And we will try to, to take some lava. This is the main objective. To collect the lava, they must haul more than 1,000 pounds of gear to the edge of the volcano then rappel into the crater, down to a ledge dangerously close to the surface of this molten lake. The plan is simple, but risky. The team stretches a cable across more than 200 feet of the crater rim. Then one at a time, Frank and colleague Irene Margaritas pull themselves along the cable until they hang suspended directly above the inferno, as vulnerable as moths over a candle flame. There are only a few hundred volcanologists worldwide, and since 1975, more than two dozen have died in accidents on volcanoes. You're in. Uh, do you have a little sling? I don't have more. Although Erta Ali seems relatively docile, even predictable, these scientists know better than to think they are ever safe. An active volcano is like a window into the heart of the Earth. It's a piece of this heart Frank has come to collect. The molten rock spewed out of a volcano may begin its journey to the surface from as far as 100 miles underground. Frank tosses a cable into the pit, hoping the lava will stick. He tries again and again, but nothing. He needs to get closer, but the lava, boiling at over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, is guarding its secrets with an impenetrable barrier of heat. Frank calls for a thermal suit. I need uh, the thermal suit to continue and to try to take uh, some samples of that. Over. It's very, very heavy. Protected now, he moves closer and again fishes for fresh lava. But with each toss, the lava melts the cable like butter. Exhausted and dehydrated, 
Frank is forced to give up on his dream of collecting Erta Ale's molten lava. He must settle for some recently hardened samples at the edge of the pit. Hey, welcome. Welcome back. And uh, I think this is fresh lava. Some it's fragments, but lava. not directly in the lake. It's fresh enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look. Oh. Researchers yeah. eagerly bag and index the samples. These small, unimpressive rocks will hopefully come alive in the lab, telling stories of their journey from deep within the Earth. Because Erta Ali sits at the junction of three continental plates, this powerful cauldron has already begun to show us how ocean floors expand and continents split apart. Check for Wild Chronicles on your local PBS station. Sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs. Taking science and exploration into the new millennium. Additional support provided by Lindblad Expeditions. Celebrating five decades of exploration to the wildest places on Earth. 